We're going to be creating this modern CSS carousel and also ensuring it's 100% accessible, which is easier than you'd think. Welcome back to Web Dev Simplified. My name's Kyle and my job is to simplify the web for you. And in this video, we're gonna be covering the CSS carousel that you see on the side of your screen. Super beautiful looking and actually surprisingly easy. To get started, we wanna create an index.html page. And inside of here, we're just gonna create a simple style sheet. So we're gonna have a link to a style sheet called styles.css, which we can just create right here. Super straightforward. Then in our HTML, let's just write out all of our HTML to start with, because it's pretty straightforward. First, I wanna create a section. And in this section, in order to make sure that we have accessibility, I want to add an area label. And this is just a label for screen readers, and we're going to call this newest photos. You can imagine this is like a photo gallery, and this carousel is showing like the most recent photos, so just give it an appropriate label. Then inside of here, we're going to have an unordered list, and this unordered list is going to be for all of our different images. So we render that out, and then inside of here, we want to have all of our different list items, which are going to be our individual items. So li.slide. So this is going to be for an individual slide. And inside of here, we're going to have our image, which is going to have a source tag. So we're just going to say image. Our source here is going to be coming straight from Unsplash. So I'm just going to copy this URL. You can use whatever image you want. This is just coming straight from Unsplash, which is a great image repository. And we want to give this an alt tag. Make sure that this is appropriate to the image. In our case, we're just going to call it nature image number one because it doesn't really matter too much for this example. Just make sure it's useful for whatever your image is. Then I'm going to just copy this down a couple times so we have three separate images. I'm going to just make sure I update these image URLs to be the image URL that's coming straight from Unsplash. So we can have three different images. Make sure it's image two and image three, just like that. So now if we save and open this up with live server, we essentially have three different images showing up. As you can see, image one, image two, and image three. Super ugly, but we have our images. Now the next thing I want to do is I want to create a div. This is going to have a class here of caro cell. And this div right here is just going to wrap everything that is our carousel, just so we can easily style our carousel and select everything inside of JavaScript. So now we have our carousel. And what I want to do inside of here is add two different buttons. And they're going to have a class of carousel button. And it's going to have a class of either previous or next. So in this case, this is our previous button. And this right here is going to be our next button. And now to make the arrows that you see right here, we're actually using something called an HTML entity. If you just go to a site like toptil.com, you can find these HTML arrows. You can scroll through. There's tons of options, but we're going to be using this left arrow and this right arrow. So just copy this HTML code, paste in the left arrow here, copy the right arrow, and we're going to paste it in over here. And now if I come over here, you can see that we have that left and that right arrow showing up. A little hard to see, but as I zoom in, you can see the left and the right arrow just like that. That right there covers most of the HTML that we're going to be doing. So the next thing I want to work on is our styles. And the first thing I like to do in every single style sheet is make sure I take my before and my after element here. And I just want to make sure that I set my box sizing to border box. It makes sizing things so much easier. And I also always like to set my margin on my body to zero. That's just going to push everything up to the edge of the pages. Make sure I spell margin correctly. There we go. As you can see, that just got rid of the margin. Now we can start styling that carousel. For the carousel, what I want to do is I want to take our width. I want to make that 100 view width. So it's going to be a full width and a full height. So we'll say height is 100 VH as well. And we're going to say the position for this is going to be relative. And that's just because we're going to position absolute our buttons inside of it. So now that hasn't really changed anything at all, but that's OK. Once we start messing with our slides, though, it's going to be really easy to see that things are working. So if we take our slide and what we want to do is we want to position this absolutely. So position absolute, and I want to set the inset to zero. That's just going to make the top left, right, and bottom of our image zero. So as you can see, our image is now taking up a lot of the screen right here, and they're all absolutely positioned in the top left corner. I want to set the opacity to zero, which may sound interesting, but that's because I also am going to have a slide, which is going to be our active slide, and I want to set the opacity on this to one. So our active slide, which we can just make our first slide data active, is going to show up while all other slides will not. Now, also inside of our slide, I want to make sure that the image portion of it is going to fill the full screen. So we can say slide image. I can set this to a display of block so I can resize it. I can change the width to 100%, the height to 100%, and the object fit to cover. And that's just going to make it so that the image is going to fill the entire screen, and it's going to make sure the aspect ratio is maintained. That's what this object fit cover does. If I remove that, you can see it's all squashed and stuff. When I put the object fit cover, you can now see its aspect ratio is maintained. And I can even change the object position to center, so it always focuses on the center of the image. Now, the next thing we can work on is styling out those carousel buttons. So let's just take carousel button here. I want to obviously position these absolutely. I want to remove the background, so we'll say background none. Border is going to be none. 
I want the font size to be large, so we'll say 4rem. If we save, you can see that so far, that doesn't actually do much. They aren't actually showing up where we want them to. So the thing I need to do is be able to position them in the right place. So we'll say top 50%. That's going to push them down on the top of the screen. But you'll notice we can't see them yet. So what we need to do is we need to set the Z index on these to something like two, just so they show up over the top of our images. And also to make sure it's perfectly centered, we wanna take our transform and we wanna translate in the Y direction, negative 50%. And that's just going to push them back up just a little bit to be exactly dead center. Now you will notice we have this weird scroll bar going on with some spacing at the top. And that's because by default, ULs have padding and margin on them that we need to get rid of. So what I wanna do is I wanna take our carousel, whoops, caro, so, I want to select the UL inside of it, and I just want to take my margin, set it to zero, padding, set it to zero, and I want to take my list style, and I want to set this to none. And now if we save that, you can see that gets rid of the scroll bars and the padding and the margin, which is great. Now back onto the buttons, I want to change the color here. So we'll say color is RGBA. I want this to be essentially a mostly white color, but I want it to also be partially transparent, so that way it kind of shines through some of the color of the image itself and doesn't cover up too much of the image. Also, I want to change my cursor to pointer so I know I can click on them. And I want to set the border radius here equal to 0.25 REM. And I also want to set some padding, which is going to be equal here to 0 and 0.5 REM. And you may think that's an interesting thing to do because right now we have no background. So we're going to add in a background by saying background color. And we want that to be RGBA 0, 0, 0, and 0.1. So it's going to be a very, very dark background color that's mostly transparent. Now, if I just make sure I add this last comment in there, you can see we now have that background color showing up and that looks really good so far. Now, the next thing I wanna do is I wanna take my carousel button and I wanna do some hover states and I wanna do some focus states. So we can do carousel button focus here. And this is just going to help with accessibility. So I wanna change our color to full on white. So now when I hover, you can see it changes to a completely white color and I wanna make our background color just a little bit darker. So we'll use, for example, 0.2 here instead of 0.1. So now you can see the background gets darker and the actual icon gets darker when I hover over top of it. And that works for focus and for hover. Now also, I wanna change my focus state specifically only because you'll notice when I tab onto this, I kinda of get this weird, ugly looking border. That's something called an outline. I wanna make it look a little better by just doing one pixel solid black. So now when I tab onto that, you can see it just gives it a black outline, which in my opinion looks a little bit cleaner. And this actually helps people that don't really have access to a mouse by use tab to move around. They can tab around and they can actually see what's going on on the page. Now the final thing I want to do is I just want to position these buttons in the right space. So I want to get my previous button and I want to make sure this one has a left of 1REM and I'm going to copy this and I want to make sure for our next one it's going to show up on the right side. So we're going to set the right to 1REM and now you can see that our left button is on the left and our right button is on the right. So now we can actually work on the JavaScript for making the carousel work. So let's create a script.js and we want to make sure here we're going to reference that script up to the top of our page. So we'll say script js and make sure we defer it so it loads after our html and then inside of here we just want to get all of our buttons which is just document dot query selector and we want to get them equal to a data carousel button and the reason i'm using a data attribute here instead of a class is because it makes working with javascript so much easier because you don't have to worry about overlap between your classes and your javascript so on our buttons let's just add that data attribute in so we can select that in our javascript and then what I want to do is I want to say buttons.forEach. I want to loop through each one of the buttons. And for each one of the buttons, I just want to add an event listener. So we can say add event listener. And make sure this up here is a query selector all. There we go. So we're going to add an event listener. This is going to be a click event listener. So whenever we click on this button, all I want to do is essentially just swap to the next image. So in order to determine if we're going to go to the next image or the previous image inside of our HTML where we have our data carousel for buttons, we can actually set a value for these. So this is going to be previous and this right here is going to be next. So then what I can do inside of my script is I can just say offset is going to be equal to button.dataset.carousel button. Make sure this is dataset.carousel button. This is going to access the property that we set in our HTML here, which is either previous or next. And then what we can do is we can just say, hey, if that is equal to next, then we want to return the value one, otherwise return the value negative one. So we're either going to go to the next image or the previous image, depending on this text here. Then I can get all of my slides. So from my button, I want to get the closest parent element that is a carousel. So we can say data carousel. And in our HTML, we're going to add that in. So on our carousel, we'll say data carousel just like that. So what we're doing is going from our button to this carousel, and then from the carousel, I want to select this slide container. So here we can just say data slides. 
And then from here, I can do a simple query selector to get the data slide. So we'll say data slides, and there we go. So I've gone from my button to the slides for that particular carousel. And by doing it this way, it's going to make sure that no matter how many carousels we have on our page, all of them are going to work as we expect. So now I can get the active slide. So I can say const active slide is equal to my slides. And I just want to get the slide here that has that data active attribute on it, which we already have on our very first slide, as you can see right here. So now this is just going to get our active slide. And then I want to get the new index. And the new index is super straightforward. First, we need to convert our slides to an array, the children of them. So we're going to say dot 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 slides dot children. This will convert to an array. Make sure I spell children correctly. Then what I want to do is I want to get the index of my active slide in that array. And I just want to add in that offset, which is either going to be negative one, so it'll subtract one, or positive one, so it'll add one. Then since this is going to loop, so once we get to our last image, we want to loop back to the beginning. And if we go from our beginning image backwards, we want to go to our last image, we're going to have a few ifs. Our new index here is less than zero. So if we're going backwards past our first image, well, I just want to go to our last image. So we'll say new index is equal to our slides dot children dot length minus one. This is going to be the index of our very last element. And now here, if our new index is greater than or equal to our length of our slides, so dot children dot length, this means that we've passed the very last slide. So I want to just loop back over to start at the very first slide. And this just makes sure it's going to be a continuous loop of images. Then what we can do is we can say slides dot children, we want to get the one at the new index, and we can set the data set dot active equal to true. Then we can use this delete keyword here to delete the active data set from our current active slide. So all this code does is add the data set active class or attribute to our currently new active slide. And this removes it from the active slide that was active before. So now when we click next, you can see it swapping to the next image and it's just going all the way around in a loop no matter which direction we go. But right now we don't have a fancy animation. As you can see on this one, when we click next, we have this nice fade animation. But over here, it's a very jarring animation. So in order to fix this, we can use some simple CSS. If we scroll all the way up here to where we have our slides, you can see that we have our slide with an opacity of zero and our slide that's active has an opacity of one. So we can do a really simple trick where we just do a transition. And this transition is gonna be 200 milliseconds on the opacity property, and it's going to be an ease in out. Now, if I say that, you can see we have this fade in and out animation, but you notice that it's fading to white and then fading to the image. And that's because both images are fading in and out at the exact same time. Instead of what I want to happen is I want to have our new image fade in over top of the old image, and then the old image is going to disappear. In order to do that, we're going to set a transition delay to 200 milliseconds. So our actual transition takes 200 milliseconds, but we have a transition delay of 200 milliseconds, which means that the animation is not going to start until the transition is complete. And that's because on our active slide, we're going to change our transition delay here to zero. So the active slide does not have any delay. It's gonna start its fade in animation immediately, while the inactive slide that's disappearing has a 200 millisecond delay. So it's gonna wait until the new slide is done animating in, and then it will disappear. And just to make sure our slide shows up above all the other slides, we're gonna set the Z index to one, so our active slide always shows up on top. So now when I click next, you're gonna notice the new slide animates all the way inward before the other one disappears. Again, we can try that again but you'll see it's actually not quite working. It's going to white still. And that's because for transition delay, you need to make sure you set it to zero milliseconds. And now that's actually going to fix and you can see our images are perfectly animating over top before the other one disappears. And that's all it takes to create this image carousel. If you're confused by some of the fancy CSS selectors we used, I highly recommend checking out my full CSS selector cheat sheet linked below. It's completely free and covers every CSS selector you're ever going to encounter in your CSS career. With that said, thank you very much for watching and have a good day.